I'm a entertainer, I'm a rapper, I'm an artist, mainly I'm an artist, um, I'm a, hopefully one day, considered to be some sort of revolutionary, uh, for the people. Fag Mob started as, it was kind of more just for fun, it started as a, uh, not so much like a joke or anything, but it was, um, you know, me and all my friends are gay. We're all creative individuals. We all are in this, like, you know, our art world, and we all are constantly working on something. And there was a day in San Francisco where I had a weird epiphany, um, and I looked around, and I looked around at every single person that I was surrounded by, and everyone was gay, and everyone was so talented. And I was thinking about you know, all of these other groups that were coming out at the time. This was maybe a year ago. And they were calling themselves the like, mob, you know? You know, like, what a mob is, you know? And, and we were mobbing, you know? We were always together. There was a big a big amount of us. We were always together. We were always doing the same shit, helping each other, uh, creating with each other. And faggot, the term faggot is so negative. And I wanted to reclaim, not only did I want to reclaim that word, but I wanted a word for us so it fit perfectly because we're all gay. It's kind of like NWA, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like our version of NWA. We're reclaiming the word and we're a group of people who work together and are creative people, but it's expanded into something much larger yeah. where now I feel like, you know when a musician has a fan base and they name their fan base or whatever it is, I never would have done that. So I created a group like a group that anyone can be a part of. You don't have to be gay. You don't have to you don't have to be even a creative person. You just have to be a kind person, believe in what I'm, you know, mm -hmm. saying, believe in my music, you know, have that understanding. And any fan of mine or any person that listens to me and and understands what I'm doing is a part of Fag Mob automatically. There's no there's no weird initiation, it's not a private club. Okay. If you understand what I'm doing yeah. and you understand my message, you're part of Fagma automatically without even knowing it, maybe. I have absolutely no boundaries. I have absolutely no filter. I feel that's just me personally. Um, I don't know if it's the way that I was raised. I don't know if it's the experiences that I've had. But I really have absolutely no boundaries. I mean, I completely comfortable being nude, I'm completely comfortable saying what's on my mind, mm -hmm. saying what I think, when I think it, you know, expressing my opinion, I have no fear in that, I don't fear anyone, I don't, I don't care really, and if you agree with it, great, if you don't, great, I'm just, I'm just myself, yeah. really, yeah, there's, there's absolutely no boundaries to who I am, and I believe that's what's, that's why, that's part of the appeal, you know, people like realness, and I sure. feel, you know, What's funny is, since I started doing what I'm doing, since I started um, performing and since I started preaching what I preach and and putting out the message that I put out, I've gotten such a crazy response from people that listen to my music and follow what I do. And it's a literally, daily, I get responses from people saying, before I knew you and before I heard your music, I was self-conscious. I was was self-hating, I was sad, depressed, and now I don't care. Now I just want to be. So if that's pretty much what I wanted to accomplish, I want to, I want people to just want to be. And I don't think that anyone should care about anyone else's opinion. I think that you should just be who you are, come as you are, do what you want. That's what real happiness is, you know? You can't live confined and it's not that I don't care about anything, because I do have morals, and I do have standards, and I do have strong beliefs, but I don't let other people's opinions get let to me, and get that's what down. I'm trying to inspire. I'm trying to inspire people that are much younger, that are dealing with, like, I got thrown out of my house when I told my mom I like girls. I've, I've been, you know, tormented. I was tormented all through school. There were times where I was suicidal, there was, I've, everything is like, yeah. have gone through my brain. So if I, you know, I had, I had people that I looked up to, but I wish that there was someone who, who would have taught me when yeah. I was that young to not care, because I always cared. And it, yeah. what didn't, it didn't happen until I, you know, got out of 
uh, where I grew up and got out of school and, and, and explored the world that I understood that that's not life and you can't care. So I sure. just want to be that person to help others understand that it doesn't matter and you can be whoever you want to be. It's fine. I feel the main purpose of me doing, of me being an artist and me making music is to yeah. spread a message. I have an agenda. I'm not doing this for any other reason than to, than to empower people. If I was, then I'd just be a machine. I would just be, you know, false. I would be fake. I would, it wouldn't be real. Yeah. And I feel like those kind of artists shouldn't be in this industry because whatever they're promoting or whatever they're pushing or whatever their agenda is, is, is horrifying and hurtful and negative. And I always, from the start, knew I wanted to help. I w there's nothing more fulfilling in life than to help people. Yeah. And if I can do something that I love, which is performing, rapping, something that I feel like I'm good at, something that is fun, and I can do that, then I'm fulfilled. You know, if I'm not if I'm not helping anyone, I'm not fulfilled. Yeah. I don't feel I don't feel good about myself. I need to help. I feel like I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Idiocracy, but that that goes it's like the opposite of what you're saying right now. And I feel like that's what most people would assume would happen with every generation. You know, maybe every generation becomes a little um, more careless and uh just i don't know less intelligent and i feel like this generation is super i don't know if it's if it's the internet i don't know if it's just the the easy widespread of knowledge but we're far more understanding of what's right and what's wrong and the the up rising of what's happening is quite powerful and it's really odd that it's all of us like i know michael who, who goes as mickey blanco personally mm -hmm. we both I remember weren't rap like we both started doing this at the same time and then rose at the same time and are kind of spreading a similar message and and it's really amazing. I mean it's amazing that young artists have something to say. You know, it's it's happened before. There are many artists that have had something to say, but it seems like for a while that wasn't going on. Yeah. You know, it was a product of the industry. Yeah. Which I'm not saying the industry's bad, but it was um, whatever they were trying to spread, whatever the message was. Who knows if it was positive or negative. Right now, the message is 100% authentic because it's coming from the artists who are manufactured by themselves. Yeah. They're not manufactured by any anyone else by themselves. Yes. And that's the only that's the only thing worth living for. It's mm -hmm. the only thing that's real on the planet. Love. I have a mixtape coming out. Um, I'll be playing a lot of European festivals. I'll be going on tour in Europe again. Um, I'm filming another music video beginning of March. Um, a lot of editorials will be coming out. Just, I won't stop working, I'll never stop. It's only gonna get more intense and it's only gonna be more intensified and greater. I mean, my work ethic is really strong, so you're only gonna see more. I'm gonna be in your face. There's no way you're gonna be able to avoid me. You, if you like it or not, fuck, like, there's nothing you can do about it.